Entertainment Weekly's coverage from Comic-Con. I'm Jessica Shaw, here with Team Death Note. It premieres on Netflix August 25th. How are you guys? Excellent. Yeah? yeah. Good. Who, how much was there a battle for everyone to wear this? <laughs> we all, we've all, you know, this is how straws. he dresses all the time. Actually. <laughs> where, yeah, where, I mean, fair. Where, where what? Well, you know, just like cufflinks. Illuminati <laughs> <laughs> mm. gang. That's right. So, Death Note for people not familiar, it's about this this kid who comes into possession of this book with powers and whatever name he writes in it, that person will die. So, with the Good intentions. He figures, you know, I'm going to rid the world of criminals and just write down these super bad guys and then they'll die and we'll, things don't go so well from there. Well, yeah, as it turns out, um, you know, uh, at some point you have to define who's good and bad. Right. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you leave that up to a high school kid, it doesn't always come out, uh, you know, with the best results. You know? <laughs> and, and his girlfriend, uh, Margaret, your character is, she's not into his plan like there's some conflict there about uh how she he should approach that right yeah well i think mia has a very like a black and white um i don't know has more sympathy at the end of the day than, than mia does mm -hmm. um keith you play l um mm -hmm. or r l and you're a detective who is tracking down so it, it becomes uh you know a little game of cat and mouse also so tell us what you're doing on the show um jerry is a, a cartoon that i've become very fond of it's interesting to me to look at the cameras in here and wonder what they must be thinking and that's a very interesting thing but what did you, did you say um, what do you think they're thinking well i don't i can't tell if they're very interested in the content or if they're trying to maintain focus i think if i move it and shift, I can get a better sense. Well, one smiling now, which I find very cool. Um, I wish you guys were catching this from my angle. You know what it is? Because these things reflect light. So, reflect yeah. light, not light, but yeah. They, they reflect me. <laughs> right in all of them. That's why I keep staring at you, because I'm staring at myself in your whale. That's tight. <laughs> that was just a metaphor, just completely. It's um, all the metaphor. No, these are all little whales. These in fact, to answer, answer your question, um, this story represents a metaphor for the struggle to come to terms with mortality, which humans deal with on a consistent basis in almost everything they do. This, the moment you step out of the womb, you're constantly asking yourself, when will I die? How will I die? When I die, will I have done something that means something? And so since this is something that we universally all deal with, I feel like this film will connect with people in that way. Right? Like, don't, don't you think about that? What about you, Cameron? Yes, we got, we got a definite affirmative. Yeah, I so let's talk about it. Okay, Masi, let's talk about it. You're yes. a producer and and you are in, you're in the movie as well, but I've heard There's it's Masi. a secretive uh, role. Like, who, what, 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 what can you tell us? Well you'll, yeah, I, well, you'll have to be watching the movie very closely because I'll go and uh, disappear very quickly. But, uh, no, it's, just, it's a cameo. It's a kind of a... It's a uh, homage to the original editor mm. of Death Note, and who's been uh, working on this project for a long time. So it's fun. It's in it's in uh, L's uh, initial uh, appearance. In it He's so cool. I was uh, very fortunate to have him on set. He was a very great inspiration and very very helpful and awesome and cool, and a good a great actor to, to work off of as well. So yeah, he's done all right for himself. Yeah. So who, um, how familiar with you guys? I mean, I assume you guys were fans of, you know, a, a, of the the series. I read somewhere 30 million copies in print. I mean, when you have something that has such tremendous popularity, what kind of, do you feel that pressure weighing on you or? Well, first we bought, you know, 30 million copies of it. It was <laughs> like it. It was really popular and then we went from there. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, obviously, you know, you feel a lot of pressure, you know, because you don't want to let anybody down. But ultimately, you know, it's a property that's been adapted a whole lot of different times. And right. so for us, it was about doing something kind of completely new within the sort of framework of uh, the, the familiar Death Note. You know? And tell, well, tell us about that. Like, how, how do you make it new when it has been adapted and it's such a visual, you know, the original is so visual. What, what did you, what was your goal with it as far as the look of it and everything? Yeah, well, I mean, to me, like, it, it, it was about, like, you know, taking you know these guys and letting them kind of do something new with those characters and 
uh, you know, and, and, and putting it in a new kind of, you know, framework within, you know, the stylization of it, you know, like there's a lot of kind of 80s, you know, kind of uh, almost Heather's type of feel to some of the movie and, you know, and the, you know, it, it's a film that kind of defies a lot of genre conventions and, you know, plays with those kind of things. And, you know, and I think that's where, where the difference is between this is and the original material is that this is much more about, you know, uh, it being kind of a standalone movie in, in its own right. You know? Well, is it, is it for sure a standalone? Do you kind of eye this as like doing more and just Well, I think the best way to do like a sequel to anything is you make a really good movie. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that's what we did, you know, first and foremost. You know, with the idea of knowing that, you know, hopefully we would be able to let these guys uh, cut loose and do some more in the, in, in the sequels. Because we definitely know where we would go. And, you know, initially this was pitched as a, you know, as a series, you know, and... Um, but, you know, our, our job, you know, first and foremost is to try to make the best uh, uh, standalone feature as possible. Mm -hmm. Roy, does do, when fans are like so super, like, we want, we want, you know, to do this and we want this scene in it and stuff, like, how do you, and there's so much of original source material to work with, how did you kind of approach that? Well, the, the idea was just to keep the integrity of the original story, but maintain a new vision of it that can be accessible by a huge audience in mm -hmm. the United States or, and around the world. So it's always like Adam did his version of it because there is another Japanese language movie, Japanese language TV show, Japanese language anime. So this is just a new version of it. Um, Nat, you're no stranger to playing characters that have been you know, you know adapted from a book or from a series or anything. Tell me more about Light. You're being conspicuously quiet during this interview. Have I really? Yes. <laughs> um, I've just been waiting for my moment. Okay. And here it is. It's your <laughs> okay. spotlight on. Um, no, as soon as I got uh, the role, I mean, I was super excited uh, because I had heard about the Death Note manga and I had watched some of the anime. And then, uh, but really, I was I was mainly excited because Adam was attached, who I was a big fan of, and uh, and I loved the script. And so then, once I got the role, I went back and, and really, you know, delved deep into the anime and the manga. And, and uh, I I originally thought you'd have to be a real sociopath to. Uh, have a death note and, and, and kill people with it, but I made my own death note, and surprisingly, I started writing name after name after name after name, and I was like, so maybe either I'm a sociopath as well, or it's just, you know, or it is one of those things that's kind of this wish fulfillment thing that I think anybody can really relate to, so I think if you were to give out death notes to everybody, everybody would be like, I wouldn't think of a bunch of names, and then suddenly, you know, <laughs> at least 10 to 12 would roll off the pen pretty easily. I love that. That's so interesting that you did. Did you actually do that? Just be like, I yeah. can think of a few people that I would off, but then you don't necessarily think of the implications no, and like how that weighs on someone. Kind of, you kind of start getting excited about the power. <laughs> yeah. 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 But mine didn't come true. Mm. <laughs> were yeah, any yeah. of these people on your list? All of them. All of them. <laughs> they were the first uh, five. Second, yeah. What's your take on that? Sick. I mean, it's a sick individual. <laughs> you can't tell that. But it's okay because there is room in this world for people like him. Uh, and so that way we have people like me who aren't. And we aren't quite as <laughs> sick and uh, can sort of uh, round up the sickos and make sure there's a special place in hell for them. I like it. Well, I, I'm very much, this is like, how creeped out am I going to be by this film? Mm, like, from I mean, 1 to 10. You know, if you're creeped out by Nat, then definitely 10. All right. Yeah. Are you creeped out by me, Adam? Well, I mean, I'm standing behind you. I'm <laughs> <laughs> He's been, like, doing little bunny ears little bunny. over here the whole time. <laughs> Death Note premieres on Netflix August 25th. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Really looking forward to it. We'll be back with more coverage from Comic-Con.